Okay, I want to address these comments from Simplex. He says that uh, in Genesis 1.26 and Genesis 2.7 may show two breeds of man from two distinct creators, God and the Lord God. One breed with the soul and the soulless other. Very interesting. It could explain why I sometimes feel like surrounded by human robots. All right, so let's take a look at uh, Genesis 1 and then Genesis 2. So in Genesis 1, we are getting the creation account, and you'll notice first day, second day, all the way to the sixth day. All right, notice on the sixth day, um, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. All right, so how do I say this? And that doesn't mean God created a bunch of men and women. And then on the eighth day, created one man. From the dust of the ground uh, that wouldn't make sense would it so at the beginning of genesis 2 thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them so if we go back we notice before the creation the earth was void and without or the earth was without form and void and so now god has created everything and now it has form and it is not void all right, in the, verse 1, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God rested, and at his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Now, let's go into another a detailed account of the creation of man, or what we read there on the sixth day in Genesis 1, verse 26. All right. So this, the generations of the heaven and the earth were created. That's sort of a dividing point, if you will. All right, so we're going to get into a more detailed account and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul and then of course um, let's see uh, God said it is not good that m the man should be alone I will make him and help me and the animals weren't doing it right so the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto man, unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. All right, so now we got Adam and Eve. All right, this is what happened on day six. Okay, from Adam and Eve, all the people living today come from them too. All right, and we, we got evidence of this. Um, let's do it this way. We got evidence of this, uh, and Adam called his wife's name Eve and she was the mother of all living so there's nobody living who didn't come from Eve and let's see what uh, 1 Corinthians 15 for as in Adam all die so everybody that's ever lived comes from Adam even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Okay, so that's pretty pretty clear, pretty simple stuff. 
Um, and we could take another look here because there are questions about Cain's wife. Cain's wife was obviously his sister. All right, first of all, let's take a look at Genesis 4 and sort of destroy the serpent seed doctrine. All right, and Adam knew his wife, or I'm sorry, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived to bear Cain, Cain being the first child. And said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. So Cain came from Adam and Eve, and Eve said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. This has nothing to do at all with the serpent, or Satan, none of that. That's, that's, uh, that totally destroys that uh, theory, that doctrine, that wickedness. So let's go to, if we can, we got to figure this out here. Genesis 5, and we read, This is the book of the generations of Adam, in the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. That parallels what we read in Genesis 1, verse 26, right? So, Genesis 1, verse 26 says, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, right? That's on the sixth day. And so here in Genesis 5, it parallels that. This is the book of generations. In the day that God created man in the likeness of God, made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived and 130 years, now hold on before you get too excited, keep reading. And begat a son in his own likeness, and after his image, and called his name Seth. Now pay attention here. Okay, in the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years. And he begat sons and daughters, and all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Alright, so this clearly shows us that Adam had many sons and daughters. In fact, it would imply for 800 years he was having children, sons and daughters. All right? Adam didn't just have three sons. Adam had many, many sons and daughters. Okay, And all these were created in his likeness, which Adam was created in the likeness of God. All right? So, it's not, I know a lot of people like to imagine God just sprinkled a bunch of dirt and, and they all puffed into people. That's not what happened. It started with one man. And then from the rib of one man made he a woman. And then they procreated and had many children. So when we read male and female created he, them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, and the day when they were created, okay, this is talking about exactly what we're reading in Genesis 2, for example, when Adam and Eve were made, when Adam was made from the dust of the ground and Eve was made from the rib of Adam. All right, there is not a separate creation account. The Bible tells you exactly what happened and how it happened. Okay, and uh, then obviously uh, there are not, did I, did I read that, two distinct creators? There are not two distinct creators, there, there is one God, one, let's see, let's see if I can remember that verse, if I can, let's see. Oh, no, I can't remember nothing. Let's see. Um, let's see if I can remember it. No, I probably can't. I can't remember it. Let's see. All right, hold on a second.
All right, so I found it. Uh, I don't know why it's so hard. All right, so let's go here. Uh, Isaiah 43, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and by, beside me there is no God. Isaiah 45, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. All right, so, I mean, that's crystal clear as it gets, right? And um, I'll make, I'll finish with one last point here. I just want to share that with you because there is not two distinct, uh, two distinct creators. There is one. All right, and then, of course, um, remember that verse here. Uh, I am. Even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. All right, and then of course, um, this one right here. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. So if we go to Revelation 1, verse 8. Uh, it says, I am the Alpha, or I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Okay, so, um, let's see, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and who's saying this? It's Jesus, right? So that's, that might be a mystery revealed for you that Jesus is God Almighty.